um, live demos always interesting. So last last session, as I as I told you before, we we're now gonna talk about travel and the travel travel online world. So I will now call on stage uh, Alison Kopus, who's VP Marketing at TripAdvisor Business, and Gary Morrison, Senior Vice President of Retail for Expedia Worldwide. All right. Last but not least, a session about travel. Um, I have to admit, it's a little bit for my own, um, my own interest that I really wanted to have a session about travel. Um, besides working for the web, also being in, in this world with, with cooking. So um, could you please both introduce yourself and introduce your companies that we all know, but perhaps giving a few numbers and how big you know how uh, could, be, could be interesting. Alison, I'll let you, I'll let you start. I'll go first. Um, TripAdvisor is... Oh, sorry, with your mic okay. closer, closer to your... To okay. Your, yeah. TripAdvisor is the world's largest travel site. We have 260 million unit users. Um, we uh, operate in 34 countries in 21 languages. Um, we are a media site, so our role in life is to um, offer consumers a free service um, and the pact we make with them is that if we provide them with useful information, uh, then we can make money by passing their names to Expedia and other people who want to uh, uh, book those people. So if you say you're interested in a hotel in Paris and you click through, then we will make money on that transaction. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gary Morrison. Uh, I work for Brand Expedia within Expedia Inc. Um, I'm head of retail, which essentially, if you imagine you have an engineering organization, product organization, then you have retail. Um, so retail knits it all together, it, merchandising, promotion, brand marketing, pricing, and runs the P&L. Um, a little bit about Expedia. Expedia Inc. is one of the world's largest online travel agencies. Uh, we were born in 1996, actually at Microsoft. Uh, today, we operate in um, we operate 150 different travel sites across 70 different countries. Um, in 2012, our gross booking value would have been about 34 billion. Um, we sold 120 million room nights. Um, and recently we were awarded the world's leading online travel agency with the World Travel Awards. Um, we are a full service travel agency. That means that we operate at the very top of the funnel where people are looking for research and inspiration about where they book right the way through to the booking and then we operate call centers to help people if they want to change their booking or if there's any other issues or things that we can help them with. So it's full service right the way al along the line and uh, delighted to be here. Thank you for, for this intro introduction. So you're, as you said, you have quite old companies, at least in the, in the startup world. So how do you guys keep innovating? How do you, um, how do, you do to be still on top, uh, on the recommendation side, on the, on the booking side, um, to make sure that you remain leaders in, in your area? And what are you working on these days? Um, to, to bring more innovation to your, to your, to your platforms. And so um, we have a, a philosophy, um, Speed Wins. Um, this is written, handwritten on the wall by the founder of the company, and he's determined that we will always keep that going. So um, we, do, we, are, we like to think of ourselves as an infinitely flexible platform, and we're changing all the time. We do a new release um, every week. Uh, which is, for a company our size, relatively frequent. Um, we are constantly... We do everything by numbers. We, um, we, we're constantly monitoring everything we do. And we are experimenting on an everyday basis. So uh, there is never the, a day the same. Uh, the trouble is that now we have um, about three million businesses on, the, on our site. So we are... Um, what, what isn't difficult is to innovate technologically. What is difficult is to bring all our, our customers along with us. So um, that's my particular role, is to, is to get that communication out there. Um, so we, um, we, we spend a lot of time um, figuring out how to engage our community. 
So I think Alison said uh, two things at the, be at the beginning there which are absolutely critical, speed and a flexible platform. Uh, we have somewhere of the order of about 50 million unique visitors a month. And when you operate at speed and you have a, uh, a very flexible platform, you can run um, a pretty advanced test and learn program. And for those of you in the audience, I'm sure you've all heard of A-B testing. Well, every single thing in our business gets A-B tested, and we will try very small changes and very large changes. So I think um, from our perspective, um, running the business at velocity and having more tests um, where we double the number of tests that we are running each year now is absolutely crucial. Um, and it's a way of us you know, looking at that traffic and finding different ways of providing cons consumers value. And I think you know, to back that up, you need to have significant resources. And for us, we would spend somewhere of the order of about 450, 500 million dollars in technology investments alone every year across Expedia Inc. So with all this innovation, you, you made out your platforms um, as references. And here, we, we have quite a few people that are in, in social media. And when they have hotels or restaurants as clients, um, part of their job is to make sure that uh, they're available on your platform. So how do, how do you advise directly brands, uh, I mean, retailers, um, when coming on your platform or agencies working for, for your end clients? What do you advise them to, to do on, on, on the web, on your platform? What's the best? Give us some tips, for example. Let's start with you. Give us some tips on how to, um, to be um, very well available and, and, and reachable on TripAdvisor as a business. So, um TripAdvisor has just launched a new product called TripConnect, which is entirely designed to help small businesses um, compete on a level playing field with larger businesses. Um, so we, um, we try and engage by offering lots of free services. So um, we have um, a registration process after which you've registered, you can... Um, answer reviews to help manage your reputation online, which is the first starting point for any business wanting to be successful. Then you can um, build your reputation by getting more reviews. We provide free services to help you do that too. And then you can, when you have built a good reputation online, you can start using TripAdvisor or other social media as a channel to market um, and use it, use your reputation for good service to um, attract more clientele. So the, we offer a service for, for we have various different uh, models for, for engagement with businesses. We have um, an advertising model, cost per thousand. We have a cost per click model, uh, mostly that's an, uh, for online travel agencies. And then we have business listings, which is a subscription service for small businesses, where we arrange a connection so that you can demonstrate your value to um, individual consumers. So um, we, um, we offer lots of different models, and these are changing dramatically at the moment. Um, so businesses have to be quite aware of the impact that the changes in social media is having on their business model. And um, I'm talking to hoteliers at the moment, they're finding it hard keeping up with getting the right skills, and um, they're finding it hard keeping up with changes in the distribution channel. So um, I, I, I think this, we are seeing the pace accelerate at the moment. On, on Expedia, can I, can I, can, do I have some tools to make sure I, I get more business from you? Well, let me answer the first question first. <laughs> so I think in, in a word, uh, I'd say partner with us. Um, you know, uh, we are a distribution channel. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars making sure that we can present our suppliers in the best possible light, and suppliers, I'm talking about airlines and hotel companies, car rental companies, cruise companies, um, on multiple platforms, um, whether you're talking mobile or tablet or web, um, even in the call center, to make sure that we can put you know, what basically our suppliers want to say in front of consumers wherever they are. Um, and the way, the way that I would characterize partner is that I think for any hotelier or anybody in the travel industry, you would have a set of objectives. It may be that you're looking to fill rooms in summer, or it may be that you need to fill a room tonight. 
So the more that we can understand what your objectives are, the more that we can give you the tools to be able to take whatever your content or your offers are uh, and put them through the Expedia Inc. portfolio and uh, make sure that we you know, deliver what it is that you want. And to give, you know, to give you an example, within the Expedia Inc. portfolio, we have our leisure brands, for example, Expedia, Hotels.com, but we also have Agencia, which is one of the world's largest corporate travel booking. Now, obviously, you know, corporate travel booking is predominantly during the week, whereas leisure is predominantly either a full week or over the weekend. So depending on what your objectives are and what it is that you are trying to achieve, you may find it, it more useful to advertise through the Agencia portfolio or through the Brand Expedia portfolio. So the critical word is partnership. In the, in the, in the travel industry, um, that's a tough question I'm going to ask, but um, it, you, you might be seen as, uh, okay, you might have a power of life or death on, 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 some, on some businesses and uh, for example, for, for especially you at, at Expedia, there are some hotels now um, that, are ask, that, are, that don't want to be um, through partners um, and online travel agency anymore, as that really want to have direct traffic because they don't want to pay you anymore. Do you think it's still a limit, still limited number of uh, businesses that react like that, or is it um, an issue for you? I think you know, if you're a, an airline or a hotelier or a car rental company, um, you should develop a blended distribution strategy. And you should count on having some traffic that will come direct to your site, some that you may go through TripAdvisor or Trivago, which is another Expedia Inc. company, or through Expedia itself. So as I go back to the, the answer I've just given, it's, it's really a question for the hotels and for the, our travel partners to decide what their objectives are and if we can help fulfill them. Okay. I, th I think the role of companies like Expedia and TripAdvisor is to help small businesses get online because generally the people I deal with on a daily basis are in the business of cooking or in the business of providing great service and making beds and um, being nice to customers. They don't have expertise in mobile, they don't have expertise um, in digital in general. So our role is to make that easy for them and to make it affordable for them. Um, so I, I, what I've found is that there are a large number of small businesses who like to rant um, about TripAdvisor, but as soon as they realize that we are um, a, an opportunity, a bigger opportunity than a problem, um, then they, they kind of um, adopt us and um, the things seem to move in a more positive direction. I, I've met um, one of my very first customer meetings with someone who um, shouted at me literally um, and stood up over me and um, threatened me because someone had written a nasty review about his business and when I calmed him down and explained, he absolutely got the digital message, got the understanding that uh, online reputation was a powerful. And now his business is the most highly ranked spa business in the UK. And all of that happened for him over a nine month period. And it was just a switch in his head that this is more of an opportunity than it is a problem. But the problem isn't that he was, you know, incapable of understanding. The problem was he didn't have the skills. Okay. which we can help with by having, giving him some tools. TripAdvisor, you, you started as a, and you still are, a peer-to-peer -peer recommendation website. Yep. Um, now in the travel world, peer-to-peer -peer, um, leads to another world, peer-to-peer uh, -peer traveling. Um, and Airbnb is, uh, could be among us um, to, to, to talk about it, but um, what, what do you think about this um, collaborative economy trend, and especially in the travel world, uh, will we be able to review uh, Airbnb listings on your platform and will we be able to book um, Airbnb rooms as an example on your platform uh, or do you think it will stay to, um, to, to different businesses? I think it's a market that's growing, that's very exciting, that we're watching on a daily basis. Um, I can see the, the discussions we have going on in our forums evolving into uh, something like your business with because people like to hear from other people it's the first thing you learn when you're a child is you know which 
present do you want for Christmas? It's the one all your friends want. So you know, it's, it's something that is intrinsic to human nature. Um, people love to get personal recommendations and love a more uh, authentic experience. So I, I would love that to become a part of TripAdvisor. Frankly, we don't have plans in the immediate future to um, uh, ha have a, a relationship with Airbnb. Um, but I, I would never say never. I would say that would be within, within months, in fact. So I, th I look at Airbnb as an example of this space, and I think it's super, super interesting. Um, it's clearly hit uh, a note or a chord with consumers. Uh, it's growing very fast. Uh, I think how it may develop will probably be driven more from regulatory um, sort of issues or constraints than necessarily what the online travel agencies are doing. Um, if I look at our hotel partners, for example, they pay occupancy taxes. Um, and, you know, the, the product itself, you know, I would imagine that over a period of time that there will probably be more regulation around it. So, you know, for us, Yes, it's an extremely exciting space. Um, you may know that we partnered recently with Home and Away, so we are starting to use their listings and their inventory on our US site. And you know, we have great brands and we have a ton of traffic, and we will flow that traffic through our shopping path in the US with Home and Away, and, and we'll basically see how it goes. And if the product is um, very appealing to you, you know, to our consumers then, or to our Expedia customers, then I'm sure the relationship will develop from there. Do, do you think the future of travel is to have it more, uh, as a more social experience? Um, Airbnb is one example, but um, it just shows that people are expecting more direct contact with locals or with other travelers. So we have uh, more and more people that want to travel together. Um, so group traveling, for example, or unique um, travel. I mean, this is a, a part of the travel world that is yes. um, booming. It's, all, it's already there. Um, we have um, fully integrated with Facebook now, so that when you're uh, looking to see where you want to go, you can see where your friends have been, and your friends, if you are connected on TripAdvisor and through Facebook, you'll see your friends' recommendations first. Uh, if you want to ask them a question, you can do that. If you want to see their full itinerary, you can do that. And people share their um, reviews on Facebook and as well as on TripAdvisor. So we, um, we call that um, the wisdom of friends. We've launched Friends of Friends so that you can see the, the, you know, the Kevin Bacon effect of um, being within six degrees of everyone in the, on the planet. And, and 30% of our reviews are coming in from people who are Facebook connected now. So the social side of travel is already here, um, and I'm sure there are businesses out there who are going to make the most of that. Okay. Do you want to react on this question or not? No, I think the, uh, you know, so how is the travel, you know, travel industry going to evolve? I think, you know, one, you'll see a plethora of new devices. So you've obviously heard of Google Glass, there'll be watches. Um, I think. So we need to be ready to be able to put our content uh, and our services on these new types of devices, some of which don't even have browsers, you know, which makes for an interesting UI challenge. I think the, the second aspect of it is you know, how people use mobile. And I'm sure you're all aware that you know, uh, the largest amount of same-day bookings come through mobile. But mobile is also an incredibly useful tool for managing an itinerary. So when we think about mobile, we also think about it as something that is going to be a perfect platform to notify you if a flight has been delayed or it's been cancelled and to offer you an alternative. And it's also an incredibly good tool for capturing reviews. Um, because as you imagine, you know, if you have your GPS coordinates and you've just left the hotel, then it's an ideal time to send a push notification to say, you know, rate your experience. I think the, the third thing is, uh, we, we talked about using Facebook and reviews. Um, we would take, uh, we certainly think that, you know, what your friends do is a signal, it's a feed into, you know, what might be relevant to you. But what we, what we generally find is if I look at, you know, look at myself, for example, sometimes I travel for the business, sometimes I go away with my family for a vacation, and sometimes I go away with my friends. So, where my friends have been and what they have done is interesting, but it really depends what mode I'm in. 
So what we generally think about in terms of recommendations is to sort of say, let's aggregate those people who are searching for a similar need, irrespective of who they are. And then when we see that aggregated search behavior and that flowing through to book, bookings, then we can start replaying back to the next series of people who are searching for the same thing and sort of say, well, this is what these people booked. And sometimes, for example, it may be people who are looking for a same-day return trip from JFK to LAX, some of those people who made that search might have decided to go the night before because when they booked a hotel and a flight together, the savings were so great that the, flight, that the hotel was actually free. So it's actually playing back to people what other people have actually booked. Uh, so we look at it, the recommendations of the future as being how you take all of those common aggregated searches to books to play that back into recommendations. Very interesting. Um, on TripAdvisor, Gary, you were, were mentioning new devices, um, and especially for, for um, reviewing places you're attending. Um, I mean, Google Glasses or even a watch uh, that can easily take picture and send them. Uh, do you, do, do you, will you launch application for such devices, you think, in the, in the, in the really near future? Yes, so we have uh, 69 uh, million people having downloaded the TripAdvisor app. Um, we have applications for um, mobile, we have applications for tablet, and we're noticing that people are using the three screens in different ways. So actually we've now got three teams working on three different experiences because the applications get used differently uh, when you're traveling you use your mobile, it's about where you are physically, the location is critically important, maps are critically important, and they may be at least as important as, the, as, the, as your friend's recommendations. Um, so we, we've got one team working on that. People working on uh, using tablets tend to be lying back on the sofa late at night, being inspired. Um, they tend to have a predominant interest in pictures, So um, that is something that's coming to the fore. We've recently bought a company called Oyster because they have some great um, um, pictures on a very large scale. And then there's the desktop, which people tend to be using when, um, when probably they should be working on a Monday morning. They do most of their bookings um, still on their desktop. But we're finding that the whole experience is changing because people are finding life... Um, Finding mobiles more um, useful for booking. Five years ago, I remember talking to Steve Cowfer, who runs TripAdvisor, and he said he didn't think that mobile had anything to do with what we were up to. Um, and now he's completely changed his mind for obvious reasons, and we're investing a lot in that. But people's, um, people like to uh, click to call. They like to review immediately. Um, they will be taking photographs. and. Um, we watch very closely what Instagram is doing. I think they're doing a great job of that. So um, our role in life is to watch and learn and stay very close to the customer's, um, it's the customer's desires to make sure that we um, have an audience that we can monetize from. Going back to the first question of innovation, and because we're here at Le Web and Le Web started with startups, um, And I'm sure we, we have quite a few startups here that are in, in, the, in the travel industry. So do you work with startups to, to keep innovating? And um, if so, what kind of? And are you looking for acquisitions? Um, <laughs> do you uh, have an agenda? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's my, my startup is way too, too young. But um, is, it a, is it connections you want to have with, with the web crowd? Um, you want to meet startups? and? Do you have things to, to do with them or no, you're a corporate now, so you're on one side and you don't want to talk to them? Oh, <laughs> uh, of course we would love to partner with uh, you know, smaller companies and startups. I think uh, I've also had my own business once and uh, sold it and I know what it's like to be you know, a startup. I think You know, for us, we have a tremendous amount of traffic. We have great brands. Um, so what, what I would urge startups to do is think about whatever you have and make sure it's scalable. So make sure that it can scale across languages, it can scale across geographies. You know, so then it's something that we can marry up with what we do and you know, we can find a way of partnering together. 
Um, we have been a fairly acquisitive company, as has you know, TripAdvisor, as has many other companies in this space. So whether it's more around an acquisition or whether it's more about you know, a simple test and learn. Um, if I look at the Home and Away partnership, which obviously Home and Away is not a startup now, it's a very large company, it's based on a very simple premise, which is we don't really know what the answer is. It might be interesting. So let's just find you know, a low investment test that we can do to see if it works. And if it works, then we'll take the relationship further. And the same philosophy would go with startups. If there is something that you've got which is really interesting and you think it can scale, and you think that you know, it might be attractive to Expedia customers, then come talk to us. We, TripAdvisor is, is, has been a small company that was bought by Expedia, and now we're worth a large, large amount of money. Um, try to return the favor to other small businesses, but in truth, um, we are still growing organically more than, we're grow more than we're buying, but I think Steve has 25 businesses that he owns, and he tends to acquire businesses whose management team he likes, or whose ideas he likes, um, but it's a relatively small um, hobby for him, I would say. Thank you very much. We're now at the end of this session. Um, Alison and Gawi, um, again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.